There's something special about La Sol Ishi No Child's Quest for me. This was my very first Famicom game. On my first trip to Japan, I knew I wanted to buy a Famicom, but the places that I had spotted them at had been a little bit pricey compared to what I found online. But while I was at this book off, they had a clearance bin up front with a few Famicom games in it, and I kind of wanted a simple 8-bit RPG to practice my Japanese skills with, so Child's Quest seemed like an obvious choice. I paid 105 yen for my copy, and the best thing I can say about that purchase is at least I picked up copies of the Game Center CX books at the same time. The problem for me wasn't that Child's Quest was a text-heavy RPG. That is, after all, kind of what I was looking for. The problem was that it was a comedy RPG, heavy with pop culture references. So first things first, who is LaSalle Ishii? Well, he's a comedian who acted as a music producer at the time. He also had absolutely nothing to do with this game. Because the actual point of the game is the Child's Quest part. And Child was the name of a minor musical trio in the late 80s. Ishii was their producer, and I guess a bigger name to put on the box. Your goal in Child's Quest is to take a no-name, down-on-their-luck pop band and turn them into superstars. You're playing the manager of Child, who follow along behind you and apparently don't do a whole lot until the end of the game. The game takes place in modern-day Japan, and you set out from Shibuya, although you can't really tell it's Shibuya, and it's still very similar to Dragon Quest. You've got the menu that will let you talk or search. You also have magic in your menu, and you will get spells as you level up. These neighborhoods act like towns, and once you step outside of them into the rest of Tokyo, you'll start having random encounters. A lot of random encounters. Now rather than fighting the Denzians of Tokyo, in these confrontations, you suck up to them. It still works exactly the same as choosing to fight in a regular RPG. The only good thing about the super high encounter rate is that it makes your initial grind go faster. You need to collect about 20,000 yen to get your starting equipment. You earn on average 500 yen per encounter. And strangely enough, that rate doesn't seem to scale up as you go to more dangerous locations. The best you can do is locate a few certain areas where a couple of enemies drop more money. Out near Haneda Airport is a good place. The most annoying, and perhaps most disturbing, aspect of the game is that sometimes one of your child stars will say that they need to go to the bathroom. After that point, their condition starts to degrade and you begin doing worse in the encounters. There are three ways to resolve this. First, you go to a restaurant and have a meal. Second, you use a diaper on them. And here I'm just going to remind you that this game is built around real-world miners. Third, you could use a magic spell. Now I'm not sure how good or bad that spell is, but your heal spell is an enema, so I'd expect something similar there. One of the more annoying things in Child's Quest is that you only have six inventory slots. Quest items take up that space too, so it's not like you can go around with an inventory full of diapers in order to address these potty emergencies. Around Tokyo you'll also find office buildings, and those act as your dungeons. In fact, the first one that you go to is Namco Headquarters. In Japan, this game is despised. It shows up on the list of worst Famicom RPGs. And I get it. This looks and plays like a Dragon Quest knockoff from 1986. In 1989, these visuals aren't cutting it, and the gameplay itself is really primitive. You also have to use a password to save your progress, and you get that only from the building that you start at. Similar to the original Dragon's Quest there, though in Child's Quest, your first spell can warp you to any town that you visited. Another problem is that there's nothing in the dungeons. They solely exist as mazes where you have to get to the end of them. Perhaps the most infamous problem with Child's Quest isn't with the game itself, it's with the official strategy guide. The strategy guide gives you direct instructions on how to defeat the final boss. And if you follow those instructions, you get the bad ending. Child's Quest may not be the worst RPG we've seen on the Famicom, but it's definitely down there. 
Just every aspect of it is a mess. It's a real bottom tier game. Still, there is one thing special about it. This is Namco's 59th Famicom game. With this release, they've locked in their position as the publisher of the most Famicom games. Nobody else is even going to come close.